Hey everyone, this is Will. I just recently wrapped up a brand new course for From Studio to Stage called Using DMXs with Ableton Live. Now, if you're not familiar, DMX is a little box that you can connect to your computer using USB to send DMX signals from Ableton Live. There's also a plugin called DMXs you can load into Ableton Live to program your light show to control your lights. Now, if you're familiar with DMXs, you may be going, Will, did you know that they, they stopped making DMXs? Like, are you aware that you can't buy that? You've lost your mind. Why are you recording courses for stuff you can't buy anymore? Well, um, I am aware of that. Thank you for letting me know, though. But DMX is, is still such a great plugin used by so many people that still have these devices uh, that aren't always familiar or sure exactly the best way to use it that I thought it would be super important to um, uh, to do a course on this. I've used DMX before, and I really enjoy it. It's a great, simple way to start controlling lights. So if you're looking for a great solution, then you haven't purchased DMX. This isn't for you. This course isn't for you. But if you have DMXs and you're interested in using it with Ableton Live, you should check out my course. Now, um, I wanted to give you access to one of the lessons from this course. Uh, this lesson, I talk about one of the unique ways to automate lights in Ableton Live using um, automation lane programming. We can uh, send uh, program changes and presets or scene changes rather and preset changes uh, to DMXs from Ableton Live. That's probably the better way to, to program. But we also can actually automate, literally automate a light directly from Ableton Live using automation lanes. Uh, and I show you in this lesson how to do this. Now, this is a preview from the DMX's course. Check out this lesson, hang out to the end, and I'll tell you how to get access to that course. If you can automate in Ableton Live, then you can become a lighting designer. That's the promise of using DMXs and using uh, this first approach to programming lights, uh, which is, like I showed you in the previous video, um, adding the plugin in, uh, clicking here to see our parameters and then clicking configure. And again, whenever we move one of these faders here, it adds it to our plugin so that we can access this directly from live. So here's what's really cool about this. Again, I said, if you know Ableton Live, then you can become a lighting designer. What I've done is I've added all those parameters here. Let's click configure to get out of this. And then I've gone up to my track, I've unfolded it, and I've clicked this automation button, and I've added each one of these lanes, each one of our DMX channels, as a automation lane in Ableton Live. So that means I can access all of these directly from Live. Okay, so we have 17, that's our newest one. So we can add these here and we can close these up. So I could turn my click on, I could listen to that, I could load a song in, I could do this with my full set. And then essentially what you would do to program is you'd go in and say, okay, uh, what do I want this light to do at this specific point in time? If I want it to turn off, then I would just bring this light down. Now, because this is a timeline and we're working left to right, you have to, at every moment of the song, make a decision about every light. You have to decide, okay, this light's going to be off, so then I need to turn it to off. It, you know, Let's say each of these just represent our dimmer for 17 different lights. Um, then I just have to say, okay, which lights do I want on? Which lights do I want off? So I would make decisions about every single one of our lights here. But then we could say, okay, let's go from here and let's create a fade in. So I did this in the last video. I selected this space. I right-clicked and I created a fade. All right? And then I could smooth this out by uh, clicking this breakpoint here, double clicking to move that back up uh, to set our value up there. Um, we can manually draw in automation by using a a typing, pressing B to get to our draw mode. And then we could just draw in automation like this, uh, which would be uh, really, really cool. This is particularly fun when you're doing um, like rhythmic stuff. And so that show that I talked about before, we did a few different rhythmic kind of patterns. I would automate stuff, we try it. Uh, and then we'd figure out what would work and we'd create sections where we'd go, okay, these are eighth note pulses. These are 16th note pulses. And it was basically just like producing music and automating Ableton Live. And then what's cool is once we figured out a pattern that we wanted, we would select this, we could copy, and then I could paste this here. Uh, we could do this. We could then create, you know, tie this together and create a, a new pattern and duplicate that. So there are just lots and lots of possibilities when you do this. And again, if you're used to Ableton Live, you've seen all this and it's great. And what I really love about it is once you're done with it, you just fold it up and don't mess with it. And that particular show, again, where I, I was working as myself and our creative director uh, designing lights, and he would kind of give some ideas. I would implement them. I would give some ideas. He'd give some feedback. We would implement them. Um, we wanted to hand this off to every other person and just say, hey, plug lights in here, assign them to these channels uh, on um, DMX channels, and then just 
pl- press play in Ableton Live. And when they did that, they had no clue that there was all this information kind of tucked up below and hidden below those channels. Um, and we were really able to make this super smooth so that we would, you know, get out of a video element and, uh, or let's say we're getting into a video element. And as that video element is starting, we're programming a fade out. And as the video is ending, we're programming a fade in so that as the video is ending, we perfectly have timed the lights to start. So this approach takes a lot. And the reason a lot of time, the reason it takes a lot of time is again, you have to make a decision about every light at every single time, uh, every single point of your song. So right here, Again, I've just made a decision about four of my lights. All of these are going to be at 37% brightness or whatever value this is at to 24, 21. Unless I uh, choose all of them, I guess, let's see, I could take all of these, I guess, and say, bring them down. Oh, no, it's only let me do one at a time. Uh, yeah, only let me do one at a time. So this does take a little bit of time. I mean, I guess the default state, you could just leave all of these set to zero and then just automate and change kind of as you need. Uh, but what is fun is this is very precise and it doesn't require you learning a new software. All DMX is uh, doing at this point is just interpreting um, your automation and then turning that into DMX, which is really, really cool. So. Uh, that's a look at our first approach to automating uh, with DMX. Now, let's let's talk a little bit deeper uh, about how to do the other approach using banks and presets. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that preview lesson for my using DMXs with Ableton Live course. If you've already got DMXs, you've got the box, you've got the program, and you have Ableton Live and you want to control your lights, you should check out the entire course. The way you can get access to that is clicking the link in the description of this video, and you can become a From Studio to Stage student. When you do that, you get access to the DMXs course 24-7 on-demand access. No matter where you are, you can watch it at any time. There's no start or end date. Uh, you can watch it at any time. Plus, you get access to every single other course we have on the site at this point. We're way over 50, almost at 60 courses. Well, in the year, way over 60 courses, which is nuts. Everything uh, showing you how to perform on stage with Ableton Live to run tracks like a pro in Ableton Live. Anything that's got a MIDI uh, port on it that can control Ableton Live or control, uh, be controlled by Live, uh, we have a course or we'll have a course soon showing you how to do that. So if you want to know how to use Ableton Live on stage, use all your gear with Ableton Live, uh, create a connected stage experience and, and control lights like we talked about in this course, then make sure you click the link in the description in this video. You get access to all the courses, 200 credits you can use, uh, 200 credits every month you get that you can use in the shop uh, to purchase anything for free. You get access to the exclusive community, which is great. It's like Facebook, but without all the garbage, which I love. And then you get an exclusive student only call every single month, uh, which you're going to love. It's an opportunity to chat with your fellow students, chat with me, ask any questions you have about Ableton Live or gear. But to see all of that, again, you got to click the link in the description of the video, become a from studio to stage student. If you're not ready for that yet, and you're still with me in the video, then just hit subscribe on this channel. I post a new tutorial every single day, 10 a.m. Central, about using Ableton live about gear about creating a connected stage uh, so you'll find fresh new content every single day so hit uh, subscribe to the channel uh, but even more importantly hit the bell icon so you're notified when that content goes out every single day check the title if it sounds like something you're interested in click there and watch it if not then you can catch me on the next one thanks for watching this tutorial and this preview lesson and we'll see you on the next one take care everybody bye